Before I go any further, I want to say that we have now officially got a website where we can sell official Nintendo stuff at the moment at a nice healthy discount. And our website, www.switchup.gg, allows you to buy eShop cards. You can buy Switch games on there and gift them to people. There'll be a permanent link in the description from now on. And yeah, go save on eShop cards and other Nintendo Switch stuff. Awesome. Hi everyone, welcome back to Switch Up, and thank you so much. If you're one of the 200 and 2,000 people that subscribe to the channel. We hit 200,000 like two days ago. So that's oh, 2,000 <laughs> subs in two days, which is crazy. Really appreciate it. Today in this video, we're going to be giving away a couple of games and it's also the big THQ sales. So we'll cover our favorites. If you enjoyed the content, then consider sticking around. Have you guys enjoyed Eastwood as much as I did? And with that said, well, what's on sale? Let's find out. Rad released back in August of 2019. It had a few issues at launch, including some performance ones, but the cool concept of having a roguelite that combined a very cool mechanic whereby you basically mutate your character worked really nicely. The different mutations you pick up will completely change the playstyle, so it might give you crab legs that mean you can move very fast, or the ability to breathe fire. As with a lot of roguelites, there's a hub area that you go back to if you perish, and there's permanent upgrades that carry over. There's also an arcade style pack available for this one, as added DLC and it adds a few different character styles etc. It comes from the glorious minds of Double Fine Productions and it was published by Bandai Namco. It's a 4GB download, you're looking at uh, about 20 or 30 hours of gameplay and I found it a whole lot of fun. I really like the art style, I thought it worked well. Didn't click with everyone and ideally it should have had a multiplayer mode, it just would have suited that really nicely. But as it is for 75% off £3.99 or your regional equivalent, you can't really go too far wrong. Massive thanks to Atlas VPN who have sponsored this episode. It's a tool that encrypts your data and it hides your virtual location. Essentially, when you connect to a VPN server, it assigns your device with a new IP address and DNS. All the traffic is then encrypted and routed towards the VPN server. The VPN then decrypts this, allowing the traffic to reach the desired destination. And there are a few reasons why you might want this. Firstly, you might want to remain private in terms of your location. Secondly, and one that I've definitely used myself, is trying to access streaming services that aren't available in your country. Things like Hulu, which you can't get here in the UK. If you use a VPN from the US, you can then watch Hulu services. Another one is buying air tickets or any products really that aren't from your region. They're usually tied to an IP address, which will change the prices based on where you're at. Atlas VPN is supported on any device. And currently they are running a huge discount on their three year deal, but this is just $1.39 per month with a 30 day money back guarantee. It's not gonna last very long, so do make sure you check it out by clicking the link in the description or the top pin comment. $1.39. I mean, that's cheaper than most of the avoid games in these videos. There's only a limited number of those, so if you want to try out the VPN, click the link in the top pin comment. Right, let's get on. Once again, dropping to its lowest ever price, we've got Immortals Phoenix Rising, which is 60% off, taking it down to 20 quid or your regional equivalent. This game's seen a number of patches from Ubisoft. It's one of my favorite things that they've done in a long time. I know it hasn't clicked with everyone. Some people are thinking, oh, it's too much like its obvious inspiration in Breath of the Wild, that that makes them a little bit uncomfortable, but look, I can handle it. I think it's a fun game. The movement's great. I really like the combat here. It relies on a good amount of timing. And yeah, they've clearly worked on it a lot since launch, and I know many of you have really enjoyed it. It's 16 gigs, which is pretty hefty, but not too bad. And you're looking at about 60 to 100 hours to do absolutely everything. If you're a physical collector, you can also buy it at most places much more cheaply as well. That goes on until October the 3rd. Also in the big THQ sale, we've got Battle Chasers Night War, which is 70% off, taking it down to £10.49. This was one of the earliest reviews I did on the channel, and I loved it. It's very much inspired by old school JRPGs, so expect turn-based combat. Expect quite a bit of grinding, in all honesty, in the latter parts of the game. But there's also a very cool overworld, which remind me, uh, reminded me of The Witcher Tales Thronebreaker, if you've played that game. There's some cool little towns in here, there's a decent enough storyline, and there's also a bit of crafting. We do have a full review of this if you want to go check that out but bear in mind it's quite old and a little bit cringy <laughs> with a terrible thumbnail actually but not bad at all it's 2.6 gigs as well and again about 50 to 100 hours
Interestingly, I actually prefer Dead Cells to Hades, and I love Hades, and Hades scored higher on the channel. I guess it comes back to that thing of scores aren't everything, and sometimes there's a personal preference that takes precedent, but you still try and review things in a way that's objective. But Dead Cells is a beautifully fluid game. You essentially choose your path as you make your way through these different stages to reach the final boss fight, which is brutally tough, and then you do it all again. Each time you fight, it's slightly changed up, you get different weapons, and the weapons you choose are then augmented into one of three areas and these systems just work so well. Between stages you spend these points to gradually accumulate more skills which are shown at the start of each run as these hanging containers and then there's a brilliant soundtrack over the top. It's a very very good game and there's also a number of DLCs. You've got Fatal Falls DLC, The Bad Seed and Rise of the Giant. Rise of the Giant was totally free and then they literally had to begin charging something but the other two DLCs I mean at the moment one of them's 35% off and the Fatal Falls is only £4.49 so you could get all three DLC packs for about six or seven pounds which is just a bargain. That one's 1 1.32 gigs and in terms of how long to beat well it really depends on you but I've put hundreds of hours into it already and I'm nowhere near. Darksiders, or Darksiders 2, and soon to be Darksiders 3 are all on the Nintendo Switch. At the moment the first two are massively reduced. You're looking at 55% off for the Warmastered Edition and 58% off for Darksiders 2. They're all excellent games, brilliant in fact, but for the Switch version, Darksiders the Warmastered Edition runs brilliantly and number two not as well. I believe that was the case back on other platforms and it could have something to do with the different developers but yeah. I mean, it's still, Darksiders 2 is still a good game. It's more open world, so that's probably why it's a little more taxing. But they're really worth playing. They're third-person action-adventure games. They have very fast-paced combat in there. And the Definitive Edition actually reworked some of the gameplay mechanics to make it a little bit more streamlined. They're about 14 gigs each, so they are pretty chunky. But still, they're big old games, around 30 to 50 hours. Probably my second favourite survival game on the Switch is Green Hell. Now, there have been a few quirky behind the scene things with the developers, but I don't get involved in any of that nonsense. The core experience here is very good indeed. It's The title is perfect. It's hellish. You get dropped in the jungle, everything can kill you, but also with a bit of homework and some time spent, the systems are so intricate. Using needles to remove cretins that have crept under your skin or burning leeches off your legs, and then the horror that can come from meeting the locals is such an intense game. And if you've got a set of headphones, maybe Bluetooth ones, and you're a survival fan who doesn't mind the pain that comes with learning how to get good at these games, then yeah, give it a crack. It's 75% off, so that's £5.62 in the UK or your regional equivalent. The sale goes on till October the 6th, I believe. And yeah, it's a long old game. You're looking at around maybe 30 plus hours. It's one that has a storyline, but you can kind of go back and play just to see how long you can survive and it's got a 2.2 gigabyte download. If you're buying on the eShop then Assassin's Creed The Rebel Collection is 50% off down to £19.99 but if you're a physical collector it's even cheaper which is 55% off down to £17.99 they just seem to be able to keep knocking these prices lower and lower. You can also buy the physical for the same price at the moment here in the UK at Argos and a few other places. I'm sure you know about Assassin's Creed by now and Black Flag is worth it if only for the sea shanties when you're aboard your ship. I can see it just sailing around listening to those shanties I think for way longer than I actually, you know, just spend playing the actual game. And then there was the Assassin's Creed Rogue, which didn't do very well on its own. It was the first one where you got to play as, in air quotes, the bad guy, but is arguably as good a game. There's tons of gameplay here, like tons, 100 hours I reckon, and building up your ship, the Jackdaw, is a delightful experience. Another one that's currently much cheaper physically, if you're buying on Amazon, is Kronos Before the Ashes, but it's also 25% off in the eShop. I came back to this one quite a while after it was released, and it was decent. I reviewed it and really enjoyed it. It's got a very cool mechanic, and as you can see, it's very much inspired by the Souls series. But it's got a cool mechanic where every time you die, you get a year older. It has some perks, because when you're super young, you're like weak and scrawny. But then you hit middle age, and you're like the strongest you can get, but you're not very wise. So using different, like, I think, it's, has it got magic in it? I can't even remember. But the older you get, 
that you then get more wisdom and it helps in certain areas but you lack the brawn to be able to wield some of the larger weapons it's very cool i thought it was uh, really enjoyable i had a lot of fun with this one it's around 2.7 gigs it's about a 15 hour long game and that sale goes on until september the 29th then we've got the biggest price drop on the recently released kingdoms of amala the re-reckoning on switch there are a lot of us who was so keen to see this one arrive after we had Dragon's Dogma which has to be said is one of the best games on Switch the next we wanted was Kingdoms of Amala and it's a great game it's an old school RPG so don't go expecting beautiful visuals or anything like that but it comes from the the pen I should say of R.A. Salvatore the creator of Spawn Todd McFarlane and the lead designer of Oblivion there's tons to see and do the combat's actually decent but I wouldn't say it's as good as you'd find in Dragon's Dogma but it's a really nice Tolkien world and if you're a fan of that style of game I don't think you'll be too disappointed now it has a 12.3 gigabyte download and yeah about 100 hours long The hidden gem of this week then goes to Super Crush KO it's also the kids pick because well it's one that my daughter's been playing at the moment in the world of Super Crush KO you have to destroy robots to save your cat <laughs> which invariably will also help you save the world is very quick and it's all about getting those high scores but the real meat is those online leaderboards and ranking systems to try and get s rank and beat everyone else in the world this is a proper old school arcade style experience to beat the entire game i mean you could bash it out in about three or four hours but certainly there's replayability there if you enjoy trying to get those high scores in each of the sections it's its lowest ever price it's 60 percent off and that is until september the the 23rd so you've got about four days and it's only a 453 megabyte download and then it's that time of the week where we look at two avoids that are so bad and first up we've got niche a genetic survival game that i thought was going to be amazing and in actual fact there's a develop there's a demo available if you want to try it out yourself but it was just so badly implemented for a for a console you know when you grab the controller and you're like yes let's go and you instantly think this was designed for a keyboard and mouse. Well, Niche is one of those games. The aim really is to splice and create your own species using their different genes. And there's five different biomes. But unfortunately, my goodness, this put the clunk into clunky. It was uninstalled very swiftly from my Nintendo Switch. And the next one makes me really question why on earth we haven't seen at least a Call of Duty mobile. And it's Bullet Battle Evolution. It's sold like the hottest of hotcakes because people saw the trailers and were like, oh, look, it's Call of Duty meets Battlefield. But it is not. It's beyond Call of Derpy. Honestly, the controls are appalling. The visuals are a joke. And it actually upsets me a lot. A bit like those crappy Strike Force games. Have you seen those on the Switch? Or Counter Recon? Come on, just give us the basics. And that's it for this week. Quite a delightful little list of games there, I think. I don't think there's a, a clanger in there, really. Let me know if you'll be picking anything up. Remember, if you want to pick up eShop cards and other bits and bobs to do with Switch, any releases, go check out switchup.gg. Thanks to our patrons and to all of you who have subscribed, taking us, well, above 200,000 super quick. All that's left to say is, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch Up. Have a good week. See ya! Oh